Chinese food is one of the world's greatest cuisines, and Americans were first introduced to it in the mid-1800s during California's gold rush. Today, there are over 4,500 Chinese restaurants in the United States, which is more than all the McDonald's, Wendy's, KFC's, Pizza Hut's, and Taco Bell's combined. But how many of us actually cook Chinese food at home? Our guest today says that Chinese food doesn't have to be mysterious or difficult. I'm Grace Trafton of The Better Part. Stay tuned and watch him show us just how easy it is. Our guest, Chef Chenny Lin, immigrated to the United States with his wife Winnie more than 40 years ago. They settled in Kentucky, a place not particularly known for its exotic ethnic cuisines. But that's where he opened not one, but two successful Chinese restaurants. More recently, Chef Kenny published a cookbook titled Chinese Restaurant Recipes for the Home Cook. Let's go watch him in action. Hello, Kenny. Welcome. Thank you. I'm, Thank you for coming today. I'm glad I'm here. So before you get started, tell me, when did you first get interested in cooking? My mother was a driven force. That's why I love cooking. Ah. My dad invited all his friends and, and, and guests to our house just about every day. Oh, so she trained me well in the kitchen. Ah. So you were interested from the time you were a small child? Yes. Ah, wonderful. So have you been a, a professional chef all your life? I really started training to be a professional chef during uh, 1976. I learned under my childhood friend in Vallejo, California. Ah, in Vallejo. Yeah, yeah. Was since. there a good cooking school there? Is that why oh, you went there? Yeah, he has a couple, several Chinese restaurants. Oh, owns I so, see. So, and that's, uh, that's perfect for me. I you see, know? I see. So how did you happen to settle in uh, Kentucky when you first came to the United States? Well, we started because my wife, um, she was attending a school there. Illinois State University. So I came join her after service. Ah, you were in the service? Yeah, I was in the service. I was a Chinese Air Force oh, officer. I see. Yes. Oh, you were? Yeah. I see. And so, so that's why you came to Kentucky? No, after she graduated and then find a job in Kentucky. That's why we moved to Kentucky since 1974. Oh, I see. So it's because your wife, Winnie, had a job in Kentucky. Yes. And so in Kentucky, were there any Chinese restaurants before you opened up your first one? Oh, yes. Many are uh, Cantonese style. Oh. And I was only Mandarin, Hunan, Sichuan style at that mm -hmm. time. And so how were you able to wean them off of the Cantonese food? Because that was the only thing they were used to. That was a hard experience for me. It took me a long time to convince my customer to like my style of cooking. And first I saw it, it my style wasn't Chinese, authentic <laughs> Chinese food at really? all. Oh. So I did a lot of the food tasting uh -huh. and, and food festival and cooking demonstration, ah. of course, and I, tell, I taught many, many years in the community for Chinese cooking, too. Oh, I see. So you were teaching Chinese cooking during yes. that time. Um, what inspired you to uh, write your cookbook? Well, many people love my recipe, and they beg for my recipe. That's why I decided to publish my first cooking book in 2014. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, without further ado, why don't you tell us what you're going to be cooking for us today? Yes, today I love to sh I love garlic, <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to share garlic chicken today. It's very simple and easy. Okay, first I like to demonstrate how to 
slice some meat here. See, this is a piece of breast, okay? It, it's kind of thick, so you start to split in half. And how important is it to cut the pieces just right? Well, it's very important because stir fry, you use a hot heat, high heat. If you don't have enough right thickness or too thick or too thin, thin it's okay. Too thick, it's hard for you to cook mm. the raw meat perfectly. I you see, know. I see. And today I use a diced chicken, you know. So how challenging is it to cook uh, authentic Chinese food with just the ingredients in the typical American pantry? Well, I use any kind of ingredient is available, you know. That's my challenge. <laughs> I see. So you can adapt yes, yes, the recipes yes, yes. to whatever Americans are used to. You know, as only cooking, you encounter five senses. You have to touch it, right? Just like right now, I'm mm -hmm. touching my meat. And you got to see it, be able to see it. Of course, after you hear it from all these people, they love my cooking, mm -hmm. and that's a, another thing reward me. And it smells good. Oh, I bet. Colorful and freshness. That's, that's my... So it touches all, all your senses? Yes. Not just the it, taste yes. buds? No, that's the only thing, you know, in cooking I love about really take all the five senses. What are some of the ingredients that a Chinese cook may use that may be may seem foreign to an uh, American cook. Well, for instance, like a black dry mushroom, mm. of course you had to soak in the water, let it thaw, right, and then right. you cut it. And black bean paste, mm -hmm. ginger roots, and five spices, uh, and then so on and so forth. There's a lot of them, you know. It really is strange to, uh, to Americans. To American cook. So right now, after I cut the meat, mm -hmm. another thing is trick is you had to marinate the meat ah. in order to taste good and and you know <clears throat> what I do here put some meat in a bowl, rice wine, rice wine, and put some a little bit of rice wine there. Now, could any other kind of wine be substituted? Well, it depends, like a white meat and red meat, of course. White meat, we consider pork, chicken, you use white wine. And red meats, I always use chef, chef blade, uh, the red sherry. Oh, sherry. Wine. Yeah, sherry wine, red wine. Okay. Ah. And what I do now, I put some uh, cornstarch, okay? Okay. Okay. And kind of and mix it really mix well. Mix very well. Make sure your cornstarch is completely dissolved in with the meat. And a little bit of oil, not uh, too much. A little bit. Does it matter what kind of oil people I use? I love to use cooking uh, corn oil. Corn oil? Yeah, they are not easy to break. They, they tend to get the, the high heat. Ah. You know, but I don't like the, the vegetable oil. It seems to me that vegetable oil, they, when you use a high heat to cook, they give it some kind of rough smelling and it doesn't taste right. Oh. So how, I, how about peanut oil? Peanut oil is okay, but a lot of people, they think peanut oil is not healthy. Actually, Chinese cooking, you don't use much oil. Just you know, sprinkly. Mm. Okay, I love peanut oil to deep fry, mm. like a tofu. You know, you kind of brown it. 
Okay, and I let it sit over here, and then I have some already marinated before I came here, and then okay. I just dump everything together, okay, and then get rid. And some of the vegetables are already cut at home. You have a celery, mm -hmm. okay, you have a fresh mushroom, mm -hmm. and you have a water chestnuts. That's what I use for vegetables today. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to put everything in this bowl here. Yeah. Because later on, I'm going to stir fry with everything together. So when you're chopping up the vegetables, are you always trying to get them about the same size? It's pretty much so, yes, you're right. You're right, yeah. That's, see, what I do, I have two clivers, mm -hmm. one with the meat, ah, one for the vegetables. For the vegetables. So for the, for the celery, I use cut in half. You know, I just, you cut in strip. And you do like this, holding it, okay, holding. Make sure everything is in, in order. That's what I, I do for the celery. Okay, mushroom, same way, you cut in half and go like this, okay. There's a vegetable here, mm. okay. Now, shall we begin? Yes, please. Okay. Good thing about this electric walk, you know, you can use all kinds of utensils to cook good Chinese food because a good chef always use what are available for them, the ingredients, what I'm talking about, to make a good, tasty Chinese food. But you have to learn how to do all this balancing the sauce. Mm -hmm. Like here right now, this is, I like to use chicken broth. I always use make my own chicken broth. Ah. So that's what I have here. Inside that, soy sauce, wine, white pepper. Yeah. White pepper is not spicy. It's give you enhanced the taste bud. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have a seven oil and sugar and a little bit of salt. Don't you put too much salt. Mm -hmm. Good thing about my recipe, I'm not particularly emphasize certain part of whatever, as long as you taste good. Mm -hmm. With your own judgment, you want a little bit salty, you put a little bit soy sauce off. But the soy sauce is already salty, so why would you need salt? Because it's salt. Soy sauce is, is a preserved kind of a, a ju juice, what I call it, you call it. And salt it has always have a kind of enhance your touch. Mm. That's why I don't use much sauce, uh, uh, salt in my, in my cooking. Mm -hmm. But a little bit is more enhance up the taste of the food. Kind of soy sauce is it's not a strong enough to really make a food balance. And that's what I have here. I think this is ready. Good. So, so first thing I do, put some uh, oil in there. Now you were saying that some people think that peanut oil is not healthy, and actually that's not true. Peanut oil is very healthy. <laughs> I think so too, but the reason why in the United States, a lot of people allergic to peanut. Oh, that's true. That's, that's, true. that's why right. I, yeah, I, I forgot to mention it, because a lot of people, they cannot stand right. it. 
the, the yeah, oil. They, they're allergic. That's why I use this corn in, oil. So instead. in your restaurants, you used corn oil. If I use corn oil most of the time, but because of this uh, cholesterol things going on, you know, mm -hmm. I have to watch out what kind of oil I use because I do serve a, a, some of the deep fries, chicken, mm -hmm. beef, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I have to pick the right oil mm -hmm. and healthy for the customers. Very good, very so, good. Yep, okay. Now, first thing first, let's do this chicken. You stir fry until the chicken turn into white color. That okay. means that's a complete cook. See, that's a, usually in the restaurant they have right equipment, mm -hmm. high heat, mm -hmm. very high heat, so very quick. You have to stir very quick, but electric wok is safe. <laughs> if you you don't have any confidence, because it take it will take a long, little bit longer right. to to cook the meat. Right. So in the restaurant, do you use a flame? More oh, very high flame, very high, high flame, flame. Not yeah. electric. Yeah, and they always flip all the time. Ah, uh, yes, they, I've seen that. Yeah, that's because high heat. Otherwise, you burn your food right. very quickly. So did you do that in the restaurant? You flip. It? Oh yes, gotta have a. Very strong. Very strong. <laughs> oh, yes. Flip all the time. Mm. Work up an appetite, too, I bet. Oh, yes, yes. And that way, you no know, reason why the, the restaurant food is much tasty because of high heat mm. and the quick stir mm -hmm. and the good sauce. Mm. Okay. The good sauce really makes a lot of difference. Oh, yeah. I bet that makes all the difference in the world. Yes. So I, not, I noticed that you were using cleaver yes. for chopping. So Americans often aren't used to using cleaver. So well, can they just use regular? Yes, it, 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 as long as the knife is sharp. Sharp. Okay, because sometimes you use a regular knife to cut the meat. It seems like meat slides on you. Ah. So that's why another technique, you have to hold the meat with your claw. Ah and with your knuckle mm -hmm. to move. Oh, I see. See, that way you use a cleaver. Oh, I see. Mm. So, like here, you don't, you cannot allow have a big frame anyway. No, so you can't have a flame here. You can't have a frame, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's ready. Oh, I got this, good. We got this. See, they are beautiful. Yes. Because you, you marinate it, and the food won't won't taste too dry. A lot of time, if you don't do it right, the food tastes very dry, mm. not juicy. Now, how long should should you marinate it? Marinate it is usually you know, about ten minutes. Okay. You, you do it before. Only thing about scaring people away about Chinese cooking because it takes a long time to prepare. Mm -hmm. Cut, prepare, mm -hmm. okay? But nowadays you can buy those pre-cut. That's true. Yeah, pre-cut everything, you know, pre-cut That's everything. what I try to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's hard to, to get them. That's why I bought this uh, cane kind of mm -hmm. uh, water chestnuts. Mm -hmm. That's, Okay. So that's the only canned food that you use. It, or everything the, else is yeah. fresh, right? If I am in the China, uh, Chinatown, I love to buy those uh, fresh ones. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. buy fresh They do ones. have a fresh one. Ah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Of course, you had to do all the preparing. Right. right. You no, know, take the skin off. Right. And, and that. A lot uh, more work. Lots more work. Yeah. So that's why I say buy whatever. It's available in the market, okay? Just uh, don't let them scare them. As soon as you grab that technique, 
and create the food dishes you, you love for yourself, that's rewarding. That's very rewarding. Absolutely. So yeah. in goes the vegetables, huh? Yep, in goes vegetables. Here's the other one. Now, <clears throat> I know that some of the vegetables that Americans typically eat, like broccoli and carrots, they're not really native to China, are they? Well, right now, I think in China, you just can, you just about be able to buy everything. Everything, yeah. okay. Broccoli, you know, and it's easy to, to, to get. And also, they are good. They are, they are, they are, oh, yeah. They are, they are good substitute vegetables, you know. But there's also lots of Chinese vegetables yes, that uh, yes, Americans yes. may not typically use, right? Right, right. Like, uh, for instance, like this wood ear. Wood ear. Oh, wood yeah, ear, yeah. right. Yeah. I've had it in uh, restaurants, but I've never used it myself in cooking. No, it's it's a kind of rare ingredient, one of them, you know, because Chinese cooking, they emphasize on this balance. Balance. Health balance. So, which means, you know, yin yang, ah. hot and cold, you know. So that's why they use a lot of those uh, ingredients American is not familiar with. So what, what else besides wood ear? Wood ear and then the gochi. Gochi. Gochi is 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 it is more like you know it's it's a vegetable, but it's it has a you no know, a health ingredient there. It has and health benefits. Yeah, ah. health benefit. That's why. That's why they, you don't see a, a lot of those ingredients really um, are very are very real to people. Mm -hmm. But you got you had to know know each one characteristic, and and be, in order to use it right, in the right way. And you can get those ingredients in the Asian food. Oh yes, yes, now, yes, right? yes. Ranch ninety nine. You have a ranch in 99, mm -hmm, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what did you just put in oh, there? Oh, the garlic. That was the and garlic. Minced garlic, yeah. How, how much minced garlic is there? That's about uh, six cloves. Six. Cloves. Yeah, six cloves. Six of them. Big one. Oh, okay? great. And then you smash it and then chop it. But you can buy already chopped anyway. I love garlic. The yeah. more the better, I say. Oh, yes. <laughs> they really... Mm. Good. Yeah, you can smell it right I now, right? I can smell that yeah. now. Smells really good. Yep. Then I dump all the chicken there. Okay. Blend together. Too bad the audience can't smell this. I know. Maybe sometime we can invite them come here, you know. Mmm. <laughs> See that? Now we dump all this in there. And, and what's in there? Yeah, it's it's with a soy sauce. That's a chicken broth, soy sauce, a little bit of sugar, and a little bit. I I only use about not even teaspoon, about half teaspoon salt. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. How much sugar did you put in there? Sugar about for this one about table. Tablespoon. A tablespoon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Reason I use the sugar a lot of time in the restaurant they use Minnesota glutamate. Oh no! Please don't yeah, do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's called a Chinese food syndrome. I don't right, use it. Right. Right. Good. You, you want to taste that sweetness, not overpower. Right. But you use a sh sugar. It really is a good substitute for the. MSG. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are allergic oh, to Oh yes, you got a sweat or you got a dry mouth, you, all kinds, mm -hmm. you know, and side, side effect. Yeah. Now can tofu be substituted for some of the meat and chicken dishes for the vegetarians? Yes, a lot of people love it, you know, for vegetarian. That's why the one thing I highly recommend the tofu, you can make, use the tofu to make it, call it creative, Vegetarian mapo tofu. Oh yes. Yeah. You, yeah. Usually mapo you use a, a ground pork, but 
Instead, you, instead of that, you just don't use a pork. Just, just don't use, use the pork. Do, tofu, yeah, use a tofu, and a lot of hot sauce. A lot of hot sauce. Yeah, hot sauce, pepper sauce. That's mm. a, that's more like Hunan Sichuan style. Mm. Yeah. See, that's a. I need to let it kind of boil it up. And now we need to thicken it up. So you use some. Uh, oh. That's why I use the water here. A little bit of water. Okay. Yep. So that's cornstarch. Cornstarch, yeah. Is that better? Bound all um, all the, in the food and and then sauce together. So is that better than flour? Using flour? Flour, it's chunked up. Ah, okay. You know, if you don't do it right, it's just. I, s I see. Yeah. I see. So so the cornstarch doesn't yeah, do that. Yeah, cornstarch. You know, if you dissolve them well, in. Uh, And then circular motion. Let me see. Mm, good. <laughs> Use this. Wonderful. Mm. Looks wonderful. Okay, we can serve that in the in the in the walk too. There we go. Well, Chef Kenny, thank you so much. That thank looks you. absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. coming. Thank you for inviting. The better part is produced by volunteers, and absolutely no experience is required. So come check us out. Just leave a message at the Cupertino Senior Center at 408-777-3150. I hope you've been inspired today to take on some tasty new experiences in your kitchen. Thank you for being with us, and remember to also watch us on YouTube and Roku. See you next time. Bye-bye.